we go. Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading webinar. If you're here to learn about trading the futures markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutely in the right place. First, we're going to knock out our standard disclaimer. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. <clears throat> Excuse me. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk, or the, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar. Uh, other webinars, including the live trading room, is to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody in here does know <clears throat> excuse me, that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right. Welcome, John. Welcome, everybody. If you just came in, don't worry. We're just getting started right now. Tonight's topic is trade entry practice. We're going to be working specifically on trade entries all for the entire webinar. We did something similar to this last Thursday, and it had a really good reception. So let me ask a question. What's going on right now? Here's Weimer right now. This is YM right now. Do we have a trade entry? I want to check make sure everybody's awake. Is there a trade entry right here right now on YME or not? Yes or no? What do you think? Trade entry on YM right here, right now, yes or no. Just type in a wire and in. Getting some feedback, a lot of yeses up. Get ready, get take a long. Should be a, low, a higher low. Box it in, says Ralph. Maybe, says Brian. All right, so let's kick let's let's start with this. Let's start with this. What I want to do is get everybody on the same page it, with respect to to how we trade. And then we'll start doing the practice. We'll do all the practice, we'll do trade calls together on various instruments. I'm going to cover a lot of instruments and a ton of trades today. Okay? So the answer to this question is yes. This is typically uh a a mid-band trade. And so we would use our um Object Trader region box and box it in. And let's see if we can how we might do that. Stand by. Let's see if I can get this thing set up here. Pause the screen just for one second. This is in the aftermarket. We're actually just starting the Asian trading session. <clears throat> By the way, it just um, I know we, we said it at the disclaimer, but just a, a, a heads up, this is SIM only. And when we talk about uh, trades like this, this is strictly illustrative purposes. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you go log into YM and start taking trades right now, okay? Because I don't know what the liquidity looks like, what the spreads are. Um, but we can certainly discuss what a trade would look like right here. And we're going to do that right now. So just give me one second. I'm trying to load something here. One second. So we get all on the same page here, and I'll have it ready in just one second here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I thought this was already loaded on here. My apologies, everybody. Hold, hang tight. Just one second, please. I am trying to get, uh, here we go. Okay, now we're all set. Um, I can't believe this was not loaded up here, but it will be right now. All right. I was trying to get Object Trader loaded, and I thought it was on this chart, but it wasn't. So I need to I need to load Object Trader on here. It's just a, it's loading right now. Let me show you. It is on here right now because there's been some questions about this, so I do want to talk about it, a little bit about it. All right. Okay. So the way we like to trade here is um, uh. When you're in an uptrend, obviously you can see that we're in a very, very powerful uptrend here. Uh, 
and what you have is you have what are called a series of thrusts and retrace, right? You have, here would be an example of a thrust, and here's an example of a retrace right here. Okay, we like to take these retraces that come back down at or near the midband. So just to frame this is, is that we all can get on the same page here. We have basically three types of retraces, okay? We've got what's called a shallow retracement, where the market comes back just shy of the midband, perhaps somewhere in this area right here, and bounces, giving us, in this case, in case of an uptrend, we're taking longs only. Uh, this is a SIM. This is a SIM account. It's, it's not SIM 101, though, John. It's a different SIM I created. You can create separate accounts in here and track your trades through different uh, different types of accounts. Uh, but So I know it looks like it's green and it's real money, but it really isn't. And then we have what's called the mid-band uh, mid, mid retracement. So that generally is going to fall somewhere right around in here. And then we have retracements that go a little bit deeper. So in this case, we could possibly come all the way down in here. Now we have different ways of getting in. One of the mo one of the ones we like the most is what's called a region trade. In this case, we would take long only, no shorties, right? And we could hit uh, hit our hotkey here, insert, and it would put the box right there. See the box? Let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and see if we get filled on a trade just for the heck of it. We've got two two contracts here. Let me get these boxes out of the way here. Let me just scooch them to the left. So in the case here of what we're showing, we are looking for a close outside of the box. So as soon as we hit insert, this box appears, and we can we can uh, we can enable it. It's enabled right now. See how it's green. We can resize it a little bit. Since we're getting long, we don't really care too much where the bottom of it is. So the box might look something like this. So what would happen here is that if a bar closes up through here, we would be filled long, okay, on two contracts. So let's go ahead and leave it on there. While, while we leave it on, though, I want to talk about other types of trades. So here are some examples. Generally, in order in, in an uptrend, you're going to want to see the stealth line and line six. So for those of you that are new, and we have quite a few new folks and people visiting us. The stealth line is this sort of snaky looking line right here. So if you're ever wondering, you see when you get a nice move, it tends to follow the market pretty closely up like that, right? That's called the stealth line. And then these are the bands. We have the middle band, the thick middle, we call it the mid band, of course. And we have one, two, three, four zones above it, and one, two, three, four bands below it. Okay. So this is called line six, this line right here. So for instance, when you're trailing uh, a, a, a stop or you're looking for entry, um, we might say use line six or line stealth because you can see that when you're in a, you know, if you were, let's say hypothetically, you were long from this retracement right in here. Either here you had a little box. Now if this closes up, we're going to get long, okay? Or perhaps even here you were long. Notice how that the market will do a sort of a series of sort of ABC mini pushes. So we have a push, we have a retrace. We have a push, we have a retrace. Push, you see all the way up, right? And that the shallow retraces, uh, this is not same as bar close. No. Okay, there, we just got filled long. Now, I don't know if this thing's going to move up or not, or not. I don't know what the liquidity looks like and how, how much volume we're getting. It's pretty low on the equities after hours, but I'll just leave this on for illustrative purposes. What I'm saying is that is that these retracements, just to characterize between the two types of shallow retracements you could be looking at, is that in my view, this is not deep enough to warrant getting in. Um, bar close would be different. So bar close would be different. There's a question on this trade entry right here. It is a close above the region trade, a region box. So see how this bar closed up? It fired a market long order. We have two stops and we have two targets. That's the nice thing about Object Trader is that it's semi-automated uh, in the sense that really the only thing you have to do is put the object, like the region, on the on the uh, on the chart. 
and then it takes care of everything else. It puts the stops, puts the targets in, and you can e even enable the trail. There's a trail thing in here. We're focused on entry, so I'm not going to get too much into that. Now, the difference on the bar close is this versus a region. Notice down here, if we had activated bar close down in here before this bar formed up, you would have actually been filled long on this bar right here, a market order right in there. Now, you might say, well, that's a lot better entry than up here, Charles. Jeez, you're looking at getting in maybe six, eight ticks before you got in. I want that entry. Well, now we're going to look at several cases on different instruments where maybe you don't really want to do that. Okay, I'm going to adjust these targets just a little bit here. I won't get into the details of that just yet. I'm going to fade that top a little bit there. Okay. So what I'm saying specifically is the stealth line and line six need to be breached for you to have sufficient retracement as you did here to to get into the uh, to get into the trade okay this is a good example over here here's another good uh, shallow retracement this one almost got to the mid band that's a good entry these are all good entries you see these would not qualify as entries here you would already be long from lower levels okay so who wants to move the targets up a little bit and move the stops up now what do we want to do with these stops we want to move them I'm going to move the stops up here, close to break even. Anybody? Yes or no? What do you think? Get the stops up tight. Tell you what we can do. Let's leave this target. I think it's going to pop. Boom. Okay, one target down. And how many of you want to take this up above here in case we get a little runner? You like that? Yes? Okay, so we got a runner. Now, how many of you want to take the stop above the entry now so we get a free trade? How about like that? Let's call it a free trade. So that's what we want to do. Everybody knows that what we want to do is we want to get to a point on trade where it's what we call a free trade. A free trade means that you make money no matter what happens from this point out. In other words, it's more or less boxed in, right? It's either going to go up here and pop through the swing and get this target up here if it keeps going, right? Or it's going to come back and get the stop here, in which case you're still going to make money because the stop is positive. Go ahead and bump that stop up just a little bit more. There we go. All right. Now, everybody see the difference between what I would call shallow retracements in a trend that do not warrant trade entry? They just haven't come deep enough and trades, shallow trades that are acceptable. Here's some examples of acceptable trades long. Okay, everybody see the difference there? Mindy, uh, even though PM was still red, you entered the trade and you felt safe to take it because it was about the mid-band. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying in bar close you would lose coin, uh, Lewis. Uh, this was just, we don't have to overanalyze this trade. I threw this trade up as an example so I could th show how a region box works. And it was pretty simple, straightforward case where the retracement had come slightly below mid-band. We were looking for a bounce. And uh, what I'm saying, and it, it, not, not to confuse the bar close issue, but if you had selected bar close in object trader, it really is a function of when you turn that on. OK, and I'm saying that if you had turned on bar close prior to this bar forming over here as it was pulling back, then when this bar closed up and bar close was activated, you'd be filled long on the close of that bar right there. What I'm trying to say is this. Let me see if I can find an example of it. There are cases where a market will um, sort of jerk around an area when there'll be several bar closes and maybe you don't want to get in because it hasn't gone back up yet and so that's where you can get into a little bit of trouble so here, here's a good example right here this this actually worked out but uh right in here in my view most times region boxes make more sense because once you get a close up above a swing you know i have some assurance that there's going to be some follow through here right Whereas if you turn on bar close right in here without a box, then any bar that closes up will get you long. Uh, yeah, 
you know, th this trade is up, Mindy. Um, it's it's in SIM. I know some of you came in here late. We're, we're SIM trading YM. And all I did was throw a region box up here on this retracement to get in long. We were filled long on the close of that bar right there. Okay, we had a little bit of slippage. Uh, I'm not too concerned about liquidity or anything. I'm just doing an example trade here. That's all this is. We don't have to overanalyze this. We've got a lot of material to cover here tonight. Okay. Yeah, we were long only. We put up a region box and we took a long trade only. So we're long. I'm going to go ahead and take this because um, there's a lot of other things we want to show. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm, I'd like to do here. I'm going to go ahead and move this stop up. I'm going to take the target way out of the way and just let her run. Okay. And then let's go ahead and tuck Weimer in the corner because it's going to be tough to manage this trade and show other trades. So let's do it like this. Let's tuck Wymy over here so we can keep uh, an eye on her. Oh, Weimaru. Let me hide object trader. We're just going to manage our targets and stops. we got one contract left on. If we break that swing... We'll trail our stop up a little closer. And let's bring down another chart. Let's start looking at something else. What do you want to look at next? The Russell? Need some Russell trades up here? I really want to go back to the open and look at some of the movement that happens at the open and how you can be done with one or two trades uh, early, early in the morning, like within the first half an hour. Russell is loading. Stand by. All right, here's Russell right here. Yeah, they just, they're taking these markets up. They might run them up all night. Look at that. So you can see here, here's the, just to orient everybody, I'm in California, so this is the uh, close of the market here at 1300 just hit that top okay see it just hit the top just wicked it now if you had this target was inside of here and you right in here remember I had it right here I was fading that top by two three ticks you'd already be out on your second lot right but we're going for a runner so we're gonna give uh, we're gonna give us but we're gonna give this puppy a little bit of wiggle room here to move around a little bit so that's what we mean by wiggle room. Now notice on Russell here, as you have this nice uptrending move into the close and after hours, the actual close of the futures markets was right here. 1 o'clock Pacific, 115 actually, which is actually kind of right in here. Notice that you came up, you broke the mid band, you got a, you got a, a push up here. Now the, the, uh, the, the background was red when it came up through here, so I don't know if you caught this first leg. That's what happens a lot is, you know, a lot of times you'll get a push, you get a trend reversal. A lot of times you won't get that first leg. So what we're looking for is pullbacks. In, in this case, we got it right here. And this was sufficiently deep to get us in. More or less right in here. Okay. Everybody see that? Let's look at some other trades. Let's go back to the open on the Russell and take a look at what happened and talk about these moves. Because I remember I traded Russell and made pretty good money in the first uh, half an hour, first hour really. So that would have been 6.30 Pacific time, which is over here. All right, here we go. Let's get you oriented here. 6.30 Pacific was right. Should have got out of that trade right there, huh? That's why I do that. See how it came right up and hit that top? It didn't break it. So let's see where she gets support, if she gets a higher level of support. All right, let's put in, uh, let's put in a vertical line where the open of the market was. Now, one of the most important things to do when you start your, 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 your uh, pre-market routine if you will, where you're going to get ready to trade, you want to put your support and resistance lines in. So I'll just help you out here and get to knock that out. So in the pre-market, your support resistance clearly was up here, and you had support more or less down in this area right here. Now, there was a thrust 
in the first minute of the open and what direction was it there was a thrust right at the open in what direction was it here's the open on the market here's the range that she was in prior to the open and there was a thrust after this point right here and what direction was it down yeah down now what happens when we go into a trend from a range is that oh and let me just pause and go back for a second right here okay we know that there are I mean basically markets are going to be one of two things they're either going to be trending or not trending when they're not trending they're said to be in a range or range bound right sideways consolidation there's lots of different names for it we can clearly see here that in the pre-market session for Russell it was in this range so you have to decide our minimum is 20 to 25 ticks this is pretty choppy it's fairly choppy it's hard to say whether you would have traded this or not but the point I'm trying to make here is this is that um, mid-band trades that we like in trends are generally going to be off the table so what, what I mean explicitly to be clear about that is that if you're going to trade a range we know that it's different than trend trading in the fact that you're going to be buying and selling the extremes of the range in that sense range bound trading is different right we're not looking for retracements to the mid band as we would in a in a trending type trade because there is no trend so it's quite the opposite we're not trading the mid-band we are trading the extremes of the range should you choose to trade it how many of you quick show of hands how many of you like trading ranges and you're good at them and you like them you put in a yes or, or L for like how many of you don't like them yeah so you scalp you scalp the chop that's exactly right Lewis and when you're in a clear clearly defined uh, region or range like this you're not doing boxes at the mid band because there's no meat on the bone here right think about it if you're gonna get short you know by the time you get filled on a bar close you're right at support so you don't want to do that there's no region boxes in the middle of a range we don't do that we trade the extremes you're either selling the top shorting it and covering at the bottom or you're buying the bottom and taking coin up at the top you're scalping inside the range short okay long long short short long here you get one more short shot at a short right here mid band off the table now you were right after the it, about a minute or two into into uh, uh, the trading session on Russell whenever a, a support level is breached as it was here notice how the background turns red we take out support we thrust down to a fresh swing so this in and of itself simply sets the trend to tell us what types of trades we're looking for which would be short right we're looking to get short on retraces when we're in a downtrend background is red bars are predominantly red and uh, 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 the uh, the mid band is stair stepping down all the bands are stair stepping down you're clearly in a in a downtrend now we had a couple of trade setups off of this push down here we had a short off the mid band roll right here wicked it twice at 09 I think we were calling out 09 08 90 09 10 I believe we called that out live I actually took this and so in that sense the these this these two right here were mid band trades see how it kissed the mid band and rolled that's our middle retracement we love those those are text what well, you word textbook mid band roll that would be an example of it right there now in this case here you got the scalp off right here we get down our stops we stop out and then notice how Russell goes a little bit deeper up into here now one thing that gets people concerned is that the bars turn blue and it goes above the mid band does that freak anybody out in terms of taking the shorts and Nasdaq is it Nasdaq is 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 notorious for doing this Nasdaq we could look at a chart here I'm sure Nasdaq probably went all the way up into here and you're thinking you're getting a trend change 
So what I'm trying to t impress upon you is do not let the bar change to blue freak you out. Okay? This is still a downtrend. The market doesn't always respect the mid band. Sometimes it goes a little deeper. Remember we talked about we have shallow retracements, mid band retracements, and, tra and retracements that go a little bit deeper. All right, how many of you want to move the stop up over here on this trade to under this bar right there? You like that? How about that? How about right there? All right, it's popping the top. We got our target way up here on the runner. We're still long Wyme on one lot. We have, we have one. We peel one off already, and we're still long one lot. Now, what I want to show you here is this: is that you got to roll over at uh, 6:30. Well, it looks like it would have been like 6:36, 6:8, 6:08 or eight minutes into the into the market open on the close. If you had boxed the region box using Object Trader short right here. Now. If the markets aren't moving too fast, you can also put, you can enter on a market order yourself, or you can put a limit order there. Okay, you don't, I mean, region boxes and object trader are the preferred method of trading. However, you could still put a sell order right here with a limit order, and you'd still be filled short on the close of that bar. Right here. Now, notice what we get here. It comes down, checks the swing, pulls back up, just wicks a little bit through the stealth line here, rolls over, and goes all the way down here. Now, depending on the tightness of your stop, it probably took you out, I don't know, maybe somewhere in here. So how much money did this trade make? Let's, let's say you didn't get this one. You didn't get this entry, and you didn't get these two entries here, and all you caught was this trade right here. Say you were filled short at 086, uh, 0860, and you got out and covered down here at 0350. Here, let's use a round number, 0360, 08, 50 ticks. 50 ticks, roughly, depending on your actual fill and exit. You know, your plus or let's just call it plus or minus 50 ticks from short here to covering down here. Now, that's 250 per contract. So one lot, you'd be up 250. Two lot on the whole move, you'd be up roughly $500. Now, how many of you would be done? Say you put two lot on. You put two lot on on a region box. You're filled short right here on the Russell. You trail your stop on two, trail your stop on two, trail your stop on two, all the way down into here, and you get, get popped on your stops. You net, you know, less commission, 50 ticks, 250 or 500. Many of you would be done. Good. Good. Lewis, would you be done? What's your what's your profit goal, everybody? What's your profit goal for the day? Is it five hundred bucks? We should know our profit goal. We've talked about that in webinar after webinar, right? What is your profit goal? You need to have a profit goal because what does that do? That tells you when you stop. Now, there were tons more move on the Russell, okay? There's ton more moves on the Russell. And so a lot of traders say, you know, well, I don't know, Charles. You know, I, 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 I feel hot today. Why wouldn't I just keep trading? Because you wind up giving it all back. Sometimes you give it all back. Sometimes you get lucky and you keep the game going, right? Let's look at a couple other trades here, and then we're going to start doing our exercises, okay? Is everybody clear what we're doing? Retracement trading at or near the mid-band in trends. There was a lot of action today. Um, but there was a lot of good trades right out of the gate where you could have been one done, one or two and done, definitely. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's do an exercise together. Let's, everybody's on the same. On, I don't see any questions coming in here. Let's do a couple of trades together. All right? Now, I'm going to advance the chart. And here's how we're going to do these exercises. This is what people really like, and, and we're going to do this together here, okay? We're going to do this all together. I'm going to advance the chart, and you tell me when you see a trade. You don't have to say long or short. You don't have to do anything. All you simply do is hit the letter T when you think it's, it's time to take a trade. Well, I haven't started yet, Roger. <laughs> the screen is paused. Don't type in a T yet. Okay, we're going to do this exercise together, okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to start it right now. When you see trade, you type in the letter T. Here we go. 
looking at the Russell. I'm going to advance the chart slowly as if we're watching it, pretending it's tomorrow morning and we're watching it together tomorrow morning live. Okay, and just to help you out, we're already in this trade. This was a short trade right here, so we're not counting that. Okay, look beyond that to the current bars that are starting to form. Here we go. Okay, you're at 6.47 a.m. Pacific. Let me blow it up a little bit so you can see it. 6.48 a.m. Pacific, so we're about 18 minutes into the trading session. Okay, I'm going to blow this up a little bit more so you can see it real good. Okay, that should be sufficiently large to see the bars clearly. Okay, 6.50, 6.49 Pacific. All right, we stopped out of that trade. I'm going to put the YM away and blow this up. All right, I'm going to pause it right there. Many of you, many, many of you uh, uh, typed in a T when you saw these bars forming right here. These couple of bars. I showed those bars first. Okay? Many of you typed in a T. Some of you didn't type in a T until these bars formed. And that's okay, because this was all a region box just slightly above the mid-band where you would box it in with your region tool, right? Some of you didn't type in a T until these bars started forming right here. So this is the important takeaway from this exercise, and this is why I want to do this, okay? You can't, when, when trades set up, they're like, they're like uh, trains and planes and buses. They come and then they leave. They come and they leave. Okay, imagine this. If a, tr if a, tra if a plane comes, you know, or let's say a train. Let's say you're waiting for a train. And you have your ticket, and you're ready to get on the train, and the train pulls up and it stops right in front of you, and you're standing on the on the dock to get on the train. Well, you got to get on the train when the doors open and you go in and you take, go to your destination. Yes. What if the what if the train pulls up, and you're standing there with your ticket, and the doors are open, and then you decide not to get in until after the doors close, and the train's going down the tracks. What would happen there? Well, you probably you could fall off the dock on your face. <laughs> so, t so trades are just like that, right? When they come, they present themselves in various forms, and they may stay there for 30 seconds or a minute, or it might sit there for five minutes. But what the key takeaway is here is that you have to fine-tune your ability to see the trade entry. And when you do, you don't hesitate. You go in and you pull the trigger and take that trade. Because if you start getting in, you don't want to get in on the thrust. Okay? When the market's down here, you're not looking to enter that trade because people are already taking profit who are short on this bar right here. Does everybody see that? That's why I do these exercises. I do these T exercises so everybody sees where to get in. Let's do some more. We're going to do a lot of these in the next, you know, 25 minutes. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to advance the chart, and you're going to type in a T where you see the next trade. Is everybody ready? Okay, here comes the next trade. Still trading the Russell. It's still early. It's only 650. Here we go. 652. We're already short. Very powerful trend. 656. Going lower. It was a heck of a trade there, wasn't it? We'll, we'll circle back on these, okay? We'll circle back on these. Uh, I, I just want to get the next trade set up, and we'll circle back. Talk about this a little bit. Okay, now we're at 6.59. We're coming up on 7 a.m. Pacific. I don't think there was any news here today. Coming right at 7 a.m. Pacific. Or 6.59.
coming right at 7. All right, I'm going to pause right there. I'm really a little shocked. Um, out of this entire audience of people here tonight, we only got one, two, three, four, five T's. I'm actually kind of shocked. Um, is it that you're just, let me ask a question here. Are you, well, I mean, some people maybe aren't really participating. Maybe you're busy doing other stuff and that's fine. I understand that. Um, are you not seeing, are you not seeing this trade? Because out of all the people here, we only got five T's. And there were several places to take the short, right? Some of you start typing in a T right here when these bars started to form, and you were never filled short because it never broke on a region box. Some of you, a, a, a couple typed in T's when it went right there, and that was correct. And then, and then after it broke down here and it came up and kissed, you had a third shot to get short right here, and I think one of you typed in a T right here, which is acceptable. All of these three spots, you should have typed in a T. I don't understand how you can be missing these. Is it you're just not seeing them? You don't understand? You, you, it, it, I mean, I'm seriously looking for, I'm not being facetious, I'm being serious. Do you just not see these trade entries? Every single person in here should have typed in a T right in here. And we only got five. So there's got to be a problem. Uh, maybe I'm not, is it not being explained correctly? So you don't actually see it? By the way, um, let's just go back here while you're pondering that question and talk about these other trades. Okay, so we got, this trade was 50 ticks. So you made 250 or 500 on two. Depending on your fill here, you probably peeled off maybe 15 or 20 on this short right here from the deep deep uh, probe short right in here. And then this trade right here, I mean, even if you slept in until 655, 656, you're filled short on this candle here at 0360, and you really didn't stop out until all the way at uh, 9760. That's 60 ticks. 60 ticks short is $300 a contract from here to here. You could have missed all of this. You could have been asleep at the open. You didn't have any of this pre-market stuff. You totally missed all these shorts. You didn't get the first one. You didn't get the second one. You totally missed that. You know, you didn't you, you didn't get this one. You totally missed that. You saw this one perfect textbook region box. You went ahead and you took that one, filled short on the close of the bar at 0360, and blammo, you get 60 ticks, $300 a contract, $600 on a two lot. You take this one, you get another one come in, and let's see what that one did. I mean, all due respect here between us kids here tonight in this webinar, these markets, these equity markets are just handing you money. You, the, you have to, you know, if you're going to, this is the time to make hay, okay? Basically, between, between uh, in the fall, after the holidays, January, good volatility, all the way up until May 25th, it's kind of like farmers getting their harvest, Think of it that way. It's like farmers getting your harvest. You're harvesting all the wheat and the corn, and you're stocking up for the summer, which is typically slow and choppy. Every single one of these retracements were short trades. Here's another one right here. I distinctly remember calling this out in the room live as I took it. Hit its head at 99.30. Again, there was another short. Short here. Short here. Deep retracement. Now, I want to show you this one here. Now, this, it, some of you might be nervous, but don't be nervous because if you put a region box on here, and this is why you don't do bar close, okay? If you did bar close in here, you're actually short. Does everybody see this? When the bar closes down, it fills you short on bar close. I rarely use bar close. The only time I use bar close is if a market's moving so fast, I don't have time to draw a region box, and I really want it. I'll turn bar close on. But look what happens here. See, as you get a series of bars closing, however, they don't breach the bottom of the box. So a region box trader is not filled short, whereas a bar close trader is filled short and probably got stopped, up, uh, stopped out with the deeper retracement up into here. 
Notice how it came right back to that swing. I remember watching this and calling it in the room. I think Gary was calling it too. We were both observing and trading the same levels. Comes up, kisses that level one more time, and sure enough, you get another entry right up here. I mean, you could have missed this entry at this swing, still got in at the mid-band, anywhere in here, on a limit, market order, or region box, and still got short and made money. I mean, truth be told, I haven't seen volatility like this in years. I mean, I think it's because all these markets are at records highs, and they're just, they're just pushing the limits of volatility. Huge swings. I mean, I remember the day we would be happy to get 10, 15, 20 ticks. These, these are 60 tick moves. 100 tick moves. All right, let's do this. Let's get off the Russell. Let's look at something else. Let's go back to Wyoming. If you're in the beginning stages of learning how to trade the futures, if you're trying to get uh, funded on an account, uh, if you're trading your own account and you're trying to make money, you definitely want to be looking at YM and the Russell. Okay? NASDAQ is generally going to be too fast for you. I didn't see your question, Lewis. I'm sorry. My apologies. My apologies. Let's see here. I was sorry. Uh, 1604 reverse. Would he been looking to break that low? Well, the 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 uh, the trade setups were where we showed why on those yellow bars where we drew the boxes. So each time you get up, when you're in a trend, anywhere near the midband, below it, at it, or slightly above it. Let's go back to Weimar at the open. We had some nice moves on YM. Let's see where you would have wanted to uh, to get in and how much uh, how much money they made. Very quickly here, stand by, please. That's the thing too. You can't be you know you gotta you gotta be flexible early in the morning. You can't be married into you know if a trend is going, if it's not trending. All right, let's do the uh, let's do the exercise together again. I'm going to start advancing this chart, and you're going to tell me where you see a trade entry. I want everybody here, please, I'm asking very nicely, if you want to learn how to trade and make money, these are the exercises you need to do. Okay? I mean, you've got one precious hour to spend here learning how to get trade entries, and if you spend it doing texting and watching TV, then you're missing out. What I'm showing you here is what's going to make you money. Okay? If you want to make money and you're serious about it, you have to participate in these exercises. Let's go ahead and advance this chart. This is YM, you right at 645. I'm going to advance the chart, and you, when you see a trade, you type in a T. Okay? There's not a T here, here right now, so just ignore what you're seeing until I advance the chart, please. Okay? Here we go. We're watching the market together tomorrow morning on Weimar, and it starts doing a similar pattern at 645 a.m. Pacific time. <clears throat> okay. All right, I'm going to pause right here. Some of you, and, and please don't take, you know, I, I don't mean to be uh, uh, aggressive in my comments in any way, so please don't take it that way. I'm trying to teach this uh, as best as I can, but it's it, it's important for me to catch this right now, okay? When markets are thrusting in a thrusting manner, meaning they're pushing in a given direction, as the market is doing right here, see how the market is pushing down like this? This is where we do not take trades, okay? If you were to put in the in the Wikipedia book of not taking trades where to not absolutely take a trade it is during the thrust part of the move some of you typed in a T down here and that was not correct okay I'm not chastising you I'm just saying we need to burn this into our memories we don't get in trades on thrusts we wait for patiently for retracements okay I'm gonna go ahead and resume uh, you, you wait for retracements. You don't. You don't short 
in this case, you would not short thrusts. This is a thrust down. This is not a trade right here. Okay, you ready? We're going to advance the chart some more. Here we go. Six forty eight Pacific. Okay, let me let me uh, blow the chart up a little bit here. Six fifty Pacific time. Six fifty one Pacific time. All right, let me pause it right there. There's a small handful of you that typed in a T. Well, no, more of you have typed in T. Okay, good. Good. Chris, I see your comment. No problem. I understand. All right, let's count up T's here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, we got a lot better there. Thirteen, fourteen. We're getting a lot more. All right, I want to be clear about this, though, so we're all on the same page when we're looking at this, right? The trade setup was right here. If you typed it in when you saw those two bars, you were correct. Now, if you typed it in when you saw this third bar, that could also be correct in, effect, in the fact that you could have extended. Ideally, the re, I don't know if there was enough time to do it, but if there was, ideally, the region box would look like that, and you'd be filled short on this bar right here. Many of you typed in a T when these two bars formed, and that was absolutely correct, and you were right. Now, if you got it, if you typed in a T when the third, bar, you were short on this bar. If, when the third bar formed, you would have engulfed it with the region like that, in which case the late birds wouldn't have been filled short until the close of this bar right here. Now, a couple of you didn't type in a T until these bars formed over down here. This is not correct. That is not correct. Everybody who is looking to short this market from upper levels and from the rollover at the mid-band are taking scalp coin, scalper meaning short-term profits, when this support level is hit right here. You're looking to peel off generally between 6 and 8 and 10 ticks, what we call scalp coin. So when you hear that in the room, well, that's what we're talking about. In other words, a short-term support or resistance level has been hit, and you want to reduce your position. If you're in multiples, let's say you have two or three or four or more on, then when you get down to these levels down here, you want to be peeling off. You don't want to be getting in the trade because here again, you're in the what? What is this part of the trade where I have this arrow? What is this part of the trade? This arrow right here. Does anybody know what it is? It's the thrust. So we discussed the fact that we don't get in the thrust. Now, in this particular case, we get a little bit of a retracement up through the stealth and through line two. And you could may have made the case that if you miss the initial drop from the mid-band roll here, that you get, did get a little bit of a retracement to give you a second shot to get in right there. And that would be true. Yes. And then this turned out to be a, just a fantastic, beautiful trade. Look at this thing drop. It just fell off the map. They all did. Weimer, Russell, Nazi was tanking at the same time. Did you have a tertiary or a third entry point? Yes. Right here. What is our rule of thumb? It's got to come past... The stealth and past line two in the case of a downtrend and past below line six in the case of the uptrend, right? Now, you might go back over here and you might say, well, you know, Charles, what about over here at 645? Tell me what's going on over there. Well, if you're talking about these bars right here, at the time that these formed, the background was green and technically you were in an uptrend. Let me ask you this question. If you put a region box here, were you ever filled long? Or how about if you put a region box here, were you ever filled long, yes or no? What do you think? Were you filled long there on those two boxes?
No, right. That's correct. You were not. Notice how we never closed outside. You never got a bar closing outside of these boxes to give you the long, right? So you don't have to be too nervous about drying these boxes. Generally speaking, if you're going to be correct and, um, and the market's going to go back up, you're going to get the close and at least some kind of follow through, right? That never happened. In fact, quite the opposite happened. Went down, broke the swing. Here was our thrust. We have background turned to red. We know we're in a downtrend. We're shorting rollovers in the downtrend, right? All right, what do we want else we want to see? I'm not going to put NASDAQ up, but I'll, I'll try to squeak in one more chart. Do you want to see crude oil or gold? Take a quick vote. Crude oil or gold? What do you want to see? You want to see crude? Any crude traders here? A lot of CLs, oil, okay. Let's pop up an oil chart to look at a couple of quick uh, trades. We'll, we'll do some uh, trade exercises before we run out of time here. Sorry, taking a little sip of tea real quick there. As I recall, crude had a couple of moves early, and we'll look at that. Gary opens the room at uh, 5.55, 6 a.m. is the crude pit open. Let's go back and take a peek at the open here and see what trade set up. <clears throat> Let's do some trades together. Let's do some tra Oops, I'm going into yesterday. Sorry about that. Today's the 25th, right? All right, let's quickly knock out. We're running out of time. We only got a few more minutes left. Let's let's uh, let's do some crude exercises together. Here, ready? Here we go. All right, this is early in the morning before the pit open. And um, I'm just going to advance the chart, and you type in a T when you see a trade. Ready? Here we go. So it came up, it came up. This is four 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 thirty. Five o'clock Pacific. I blow the chart up here. Okay, I'm gonna pause it. Some of you got it. Here was the trade right here when these bars formed. Right here. This was it. Long trade. In this case, you could have, probably could have boxed it and let either go either way because you had support way down here and you had resistance way up here. And so technically, that could have gone either way. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was definitely a long trade. Okay, let's look for another one together. Ready? Here we go. Okay, let's advance the chart together. Here we go. Okay, we get to pop up. That turned out to be a nice, beautiful long trade. Popping up all the way to 66.54. We're now at 5.54. Gary's opening up the room. That was a beautiful long trade, wasn't it? Look at that pop. That thing was probably, what, 35 ticks? 30 ticks at least. All right, here we go. You type in the T when you see when you see a trade. Okay. Blowing up the chart. You're now at 602. The trading room is open. Gary has been open for about 7 minutes right here. 603 Pacific time. 6.04 Pacific time. All right, I'm going to pause it right there. Good. All right, everybody's going to get a gold star. And we're going to go out on top here. Good, good, good. I'm so happy, very happy and impressed that 
many, many of you got this. Okay, it doesn't matter what you're trading. The entries are all the same, yes? Gold, oil, Russell, it doesn't matter. What we're looking at is price action to get long or short or to place our region boxes or raise or use our OT tool. Many, many of you typed in a T when you saw these bars formed right here. And that was correct. Now, there was some slight hesitation with some, some, some others of you. And you typed in T's when these bars formed right here. And that was also acceptable. There was two places to put region boxes. I don't know if Gary got this or not, but you can see here that we never closed above this first box. So this never this never got long here. And you had a clue that it might be dropping lower because you were not formed long on you did not get along on this one, and you should have probably taken it either way. Did Gary catch this? Was anybody there to take this trade? You were definitely filled short on this bar right here. Right here. And then I think that turned out to be a pretty he got it, John? Yeah, I, I'll bet he did. I'm sure he did. Yeah, because that, that turned out to be a, just a beautiful short. Just an absolute beautiful short. Let's see how this short panned out. Yeah, there was a question here. Um, Mario says, these exercises, trade entry exercises, are helping for me to understand why I really should only be looking at one or two charts at any given time. That's correct, Mario. For everybody in here, every single trader in here tonight, please, 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 a million times, please, do not look at more than one or two charts. It's just not manageable. It's not manageable. You've got to find one or two instruments that you are comfortable with, put those charts up, stick with those charts until they're not working. If they're not working, then you shift to something else. Say you're not working on the Russell, you try gold. You're not working on gold, you try something else, okay? Look how nice this trade turned out. This short trade went from, uh, I don't know, you're filled probably at 35, short. It came all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. You did have a little bit of retracement to try to jump in here. Mm, marginal. Definitely not there. That's not deep enough, right? Pops up. You get another shot there. You get another shot there. And it starts bottoming out right in here. So let's say you got filled at 35 and you wrote it down and you stopped out at 13. That's uh, 30, what is that, 24 ticks? Now, remember, the crude is, is uh, $10 a tick. Crude is $10 a tick. So you're looking at uh, two, 250 a contract, 500 on a two lot. Yeah, I can do that, Peter. Peter asking uh, on Saturday's exercises, Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Pacific, we're going to do another thing very similar to this. He's asking about talking more about trade management once we're in it. So that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. That's a good call, Peter. Um, we'll look at trade entries just like we did here, part two. And then we'll talk about how to manage your trails once you're in this, uh, for targets and stops and once you're in. Okay, well, that's, that's 